uh, a very good morning to all of us. It's another wonderful Sunday morning that we are gathered in the presence of the Lord to be able to hear the word of God. I wish to welcome all of you that are joining me from wherever, be those that are watching me live through their mobile phones, laptops, televisions, wherever you are in any part of the universe or the world, I wish to welcome you to this Sunday morning service and I believe that you are going to be blessed. I want us to pray so that we may begin um, reading the text of today and I believe that we are going to be blessed. Father, we thank you this morning. We worship you. We glorify your name and we honor you because you are faithful, Father. You are a wonderful Lord. May all the honor and all the glory be done to you, O oh dear Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for giving us this new day. I believe that you are going to minister unto us. Bless us through your word, O oh dear Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And minister unto all of us that are joining uh, uh, this service, O oh dear Lord. I believe that my Father and my God, our lives will never be the same again because you are going to bless us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can everybody that is hearing me say amen? I also want to take this opportunity and join uh, my uh, colleagues all over the world um, in wishing you a happy Father's Day, as it is. Today is a Father's Day, so I wish all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. Those that are spiritual fathers, those that are biological fathers, those that are foster fathers, any kind of a father that you are, I want to wish you a happy Father's Day. And particularly, let me also take this opportunity to wish, to wish my father, my biological father, a happy Father's Day. I know you are watching this, and you'll be watching this maybe later. Um, uh, and I want to tell you that uh, may God continue to bless you and grant you many more years. I want to read the word of today so that we may uh, hear the message that God is speaking to us this morning. 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verse 1 to 8. 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verse 1 to 8. And the Bible says, And it came to, came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag had uh, and, uh, smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire, and uh, had taken the women captives and were, that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. And uh, so David and his men came to the city, and behold, um, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and uh, the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, uh, Ahinoam and uh, the Jezreelites, Tess, and uh, Abigail, the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. Now, uh, David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because uh, the souls of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons. And uh, for his daughters, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And verse 8, the, the, uh, verse 7, uh, the Bible says, And Abiathar, um, and David said unto Abiathar the peace, priest, Ahimelech's uh, son, I pray thee, bring me thither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue at, after this troop? Shall I overtake them? 
And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. I have titled today's message, There Comes a Time. There Comes a Time. We are going to be learning some few things about David, who was the king designate at this moment and was waiting to be anointed or rather to be confirmed as king because he was already anointed as king. He was waiting for Saul to depart so that he can take over the reins of power. And uh, particularly we are going to be finding it resourceful as far as the day is concerned because we are going to find and learn a few things about a father. Obviously, David did not enjoy the kind of love that we enjoy from fathers. He seemed to have been ostracized by his father. He is not the, f the favorite son of his father. Because when his father was told by Samuel, the, the, the prophet, that he was coming uh, in his house to anoint one of his sons to be a king, he did not invite David. He did not even inform David. He did not even prepare David to be in that ceremony because according to him, David would not have anything uh, that uh, uh, qualified him to be a king. And therefore, he was like the rejected son. Yes, he's doing a good job of taking care of his father's flock, but he's not the favorite son. He's not the preferred son. And even if it was Jesse, the, 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 the father, that was to choose the king from among us, his son, David stood no chance whatsoever. He stood no chance. But as it were, the anointing did not flow on anybody's head except David's head. Because they had to wait for him until he was brought, following God's rejection to all the other sons of Jesse. And uh, David seems now to be rejected by his father and his family. And when he was anointed, he was even father hated by his brethren because he, he, he became like a threat. He is the youngest son, but uh, he has been anointed and chosen over them. And they didn't like it. They didn't like it. Equally, I don't think even today, if it happens that way, uh, many brethren or many brothers can like it. And they like rejected him. And as soon as King Saul learned that uh, David had been anointed king to take over the throne after his departure, he didn't like it too. He started pursuing him to kill him because he felt threatened and insecure and he felt that the, like the throne was meant for him because after he was anointed as King Saul, the, the reins of kingship and power were going to remain within his family forever. But God had rejected him and chosen David as king. And David had fled, particularly in this chapter that we are, we are reading, David had fled from King Saul because he wanted to kill him. And now uh, when he fled, he went to the Philistines and made an alliance with King Achish. King Achish, they would fight battles together and David would help uh, King Achish to fight his enemies. And therefore, he was offered an asylum by this king and he was given uh, the city called or a place called Ziklag because he requested after this alliance was further uh, uh, um, like uh, cemented by their friendship and fighting battles together he sought to be given a place as opposed to living with the king at the palace or in the city of the king and he was given Ziklag now he had gone to battle and King Achish and the Philistines started distrusting David. 
they started suspecting him. And King Akish dismissed him and told him to go back to Ziklag. That uh, maybe uh, he, will, he will be invited when he is required. And um, in the coming battles, the Philistines were going to fight alone. And David is back. And when they came back, we are learning that they found that the Amalekites had invaded Ziklag and they had burned everything and taken their wives and children for captives. And uh, this is the kind of situation David finds himself in. And uh, we are learning a few things that there are times when our lives are surrounded by mess after mess, crisis after crisis. There are times when we seem to be losing grip of everything. Whatever it is that we thought that we had, we lose it. Because David started losing the trust of the king, the trust of King Akish, and even the trust of his allies. And when he went home, a place where he would be comforted, a place where he would be accepted, a place where he had everything, he found fire. Everything had been, be, been burnt. So that he was met with fire. There are times when we are met with fire. Even after going through difficult times, we are met with fire. And this is not to say even as a country that we were doing well before this crisis. No. We weren't doing well. People were complaining. People were going through tough times. The economy was not doing well. So that when we came to this year and this crisis came, it's like being met with fire. Adding salt to injury. Making our situation worse. And you remember when I was talking about from wood to iron, I said some situations are meant to be worse before they become any better. And there are times when we are met with fire. We go to a place where we are supposed to find comfort, we find fire. We go to a place where we are supposed to to be accepted, we are met with fire. We go to a place where we are supposed to be celebrated, we are met with fire. There are times when we lose what we treasure. Because David and his men found that everything had been burned, but their wives and children had been taken captives. So that whatever they treasured had been taken away. So there are times when we lose what we have treasured. And I know I'm speaking to people who have lost so much. People who have lost their money, their investments, their jobs, their careers. Some people have lost even their time. Some people are meant even to graduate. They have lost their time. Some people have lost properties. Some people have lost families, friends, allies. People have lost a lot. There are times that we lose what we treasure. The rest of it is burned. We are met with fire, but we lose what we treasure most. There are times we run out of energy out of complaints, out of mourning, out of crying. Because the Bible says that these people, when they found that their families had been taken and the whole camp was burnt, they cried until they had no more power to cry. And I don't know about you, but I've never heard people who have cried until they have no power to cry. They had literally ran out of airtime to cry. They have no energy to cry. These are people that have cried. Indeed. 
These are people that are mourning. These are people that are going through pain. And David was among us such a people. He was also crying because of his loss. They had lost of, uh, their energy. Let me tell you something. Many of us have complained a lot. We have cried a lot. Our cry for justice. Our cry for better governance. Our cry for good leadership. Our cry for services that are not provided. Our cry for our children, for our families, for better lives. We have complained in and out until we have ran out of energy. And there are many people that even today, they are not finding in any different because what we are going through, they have gone through much more. They have complained until they cannot complain anymore. And I know, maybe you are there and you are watching me and you have complained a lot about everything. You have cried out, complaining about economy, complaining about bad leadership, complaining about bad politics, complaining about, you know, uh, uh, the, the cleanliness, the hygiene, com complaining about everything. Retro wages, retro income, businesses that are not working, investments that are not yielding, complaining about everything. Maybe you have run out of energy. There are times when you run out of energy to complain even further. And sometimes you decide to be content with the situation. There are times when you lose friends. When friends turn into force. David had a loss equally. And these people can be considered as friends because he was not king yet and therefore he was not entitled to an army and you know if you're not the commander-in-chief even of a country you're not entitled to an army so that would be considered a militia or something because it's 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 an illegal organization so these david's men are not an, an army they are friends because he is not king yet but after crying and they are out of energy, they are all, the only friends that he's left with after losing the trust of the king, king, uh, king Saul, the trust of King Akish, the trust of the Philistines and the Israelites, after losing everything to the Amalekites, after losing all that he had, now he are, the only friends that are remaining are turning into force. Let me tell you, that is too much of a loss. It is too much of a loss that they want to stone him because they contemplated stoning him, blaming him for their loss. Blaming him uh, for their loss. And these are some of the challenges that leaders go through. And I know our leaders in the nation are not people that I can talk on their behalf or justify. But even now, they are bearing all the blame. They are bearing all the blame. We are going through the same things. I had the other day even this a crisis that we are going through is in state house or somehow got its way into state house so the presidents and the kings and the prime ministers all the leaders of the world they are going through the same challenges even some people have been infected like the the british prime minister at some point was infected and some other world leaders have been infected but yet that does not take away the blame from them people are still blaming them and people are saying, they are not helping us. That is the burden that you bear as a leader. You go through the same challenges as, 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 the, as the rest of the people, but yet they will blame you. They will blame you. So that these friends started blaming David. And he was going through the same challenges. Because equally, his wives had been taken away. Everything that he had, he had lost also. But they were blaming him simply because he was in the position of leadership. So that when you have gone all through that, there comes a time. And that time when God is your own.
only source. After being met with fire, losing what you treasure, running out of energy through complaining and moaning, when your friends have turned into force and you have lost trust everywhere, there comes a time when God is your only source. Because the Bible says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. May I tell you something? You have been surrounded by so much, but there comes a time when God is your only encouragement. You are only source of encouragement. Because the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Because no one was offering him that encouragement. Let me tell you, you've been watching the news, they are not offering you encouragement. You've been listening to people, they are not offering you encouragement. You've been looking up to the experts, they are not offering you any encouragement. You have been looking up to the donors and people that can be able to help you, they are not offering you any sort of encouragement. Let me tell you, this time we are living, no one is offering you encouragement. When you look at the news, you are seeing numbers that are increasing, numbers of deaths, numbers of so many other crises. You know, th there is mess everywhere. So that there is no source of encouragement anywhere. But there comes a time when the news cannot offer you hope. When the president and government cannot offer you encouragement. When your leaders cannot offer you encouragement. When your church cannot offer you encouragement. When your villagers and your parents and whoever cannot offer you encouragement. There comes a time when your father in heaven is the only source of encouragement yes because the Lord is our father our God is our father so that God became his only source there comes a time when you only inquire of the Lord and I say it sometimes back that we inquire answers from so many uh, sources but there comes a time when there are no answers that are forthcoming from any quarters, you go to the government, they are not offering you any answers. You ask the experts, they are not answering you, uh, offering you any answers. Even you Google, because many of us are familiar with Google. Whenever we want to find out something, we Google. But there comes a time when Google has no answers for you. Even Google doesn't know. But God knows. There comes a time when you only inquire of the Lord. And I want to challenge Christians and people that have been calling upon the Lord. And you have been tired. Just inquire from the Lord. Because the Bible says, And David inquired of the Lord and asked, Shall I pursue them? Shall I overtake them? And God answers, answered him. And told him, pursue, you, you shall overtake them and you shall recover all. So that there comes a time when you only inquire from the Lord. After inquiring from all other sources and you are not heard. Maybe some of us, because we've been calling upon the Lord for so long and answer seems not to be coming, we are discouraged. Let me tell you, be of good courage because we have our Father in heaven who never ignores our call. When we call unto him, he hears and he answers. Because there comes a time when your prayer is heard. I told you in the book of Jeremiah chapter number 29, when we were reading, the Bible says, uh, uh, after chapter 11, uh, verse 11 saying uh, that uh, I, I know the plans that I have for you to give you a hope and a future. The Bible says, then you shall call unto me and I will hear you. Because Enquiring and being answered is not open to all. I will say that again. Enquiring and being answered is not open to all. <laughs> Some people have been enquiring, but no answer is forthcoming. And Saul had attempted, Saul had attempted to enquire from the Lord. 
in first samuel chapter number 28 verse 5 to 6 he was encountering an enemy the philistines the bible says and when saul saw the host of the philistines he was afraid and his heart greatly trampled and when he saw inquired of the lord the lord answered him not neither by dreams nor by urim nor by prophets let me tell you something saul was going through distress through a hard time he has seen the force of the enemy the power of the enemy he is shaken he is fearing he is trembling he inquires from the lord but simply because he had uh, uh, messed up his relationship with this god he has trusted in himself he had self-confidence he had uh, not heard from this god in the past god did not answer him the bible says he did not answer him neither by dreams nor by urim nor by prophets he did not even send prophets to answer him so that there comes a time when no one is answering god can answer and may i tell you this morning that God will answer your prayer in the name of Jesus. You've been praying for this crisis. You've been praying for the nation. You've been praying for your family. You've been praying for so many issues in your life. And no answer seems to be forthcoming. But there comes a time. The Bible says in Jeremiah. Then you shall call unto me. And I will hear you. And I will answer you. Let me tell you the Bible says in Jeremiah again. Chapter 33 verse 3. The Bible says call unto me. And I will hear you. And show you great and mighty things sir let me tell you when you call on our father he is a father that hears the bible says in matthew chapter number six verse nine jesus was teaching his disciples on how to pray and he told them when you pray pray our father who art in heaven on this father's day let me take this opportunity to tell you that you have a father that hears and answers prayers in the name of jesus and may that father hear you and answer your prayer in the name of jesus he answered david and told him pursue you shall overtake and recover all he is a god that hears he had david throughout the bible says in psalms chapter number 1 18 verse 5 that in the day of distress this is what the Bible says. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. May I tell you that God is going to hear you. God is going to answer your prayer in the name of Jesus. In the day of distress, after being met with fire, after losing so much, after running out of energy, after running out of fence, they have turned into force. And I know some of you are feeling neglected and abandoned, but may I tell you right now and right here in the name of Jesus that the Lord is going to hear and answer your prayer in the name of Jesus because he hears and answers prayers. He is a faithful God. He is not like other fathers. There are fathers that you can call and they turn a deaf ear unto you. There are people that you can call and they turn a deaf ear unto you. There are people that you can call, they purport to be listening, but they don't answer. You know, there are many people that have tried to call upon their fathers and they did not answer. And last week we, we, we also learned about Elijah who, who, who put up a challenge in uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter number 18. He put up a challenge. He said, Call unto your God, the God of Baal, and I will call unto Jehovah. Whoever answers with fire is the true God. The prophets of Baal called unto their God all day. They did not answer. But Jehovah God, Jehovah God answered. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter your losses. All that you have lost. You may have lost so much, but God will answer you in the name of jesus god will answer your call in the name of jesus god will answer you because he you have lost so many
the friends so that another friend that you lose is one too many. Let me tell you something. There comes a time. There comes a time when we call on our father. There comes a time when we call on our father and he hears and he answers. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find and knock and the door will be opened unto you. And Jesus continued to say that if you as fathers, other fathers that are evil, you know how to give good gifts unto your children when they ask you. Because he said, no one among us you that is asked of their sons for bread and they give stone, or for fish and they give them serpent, but they give them as they ask. And the Bible asks, how much more will your father in heaven give you good gifts or give good gifts unto them that call or ask from him? Let me tell you something. The difference here is that Saul the king had started trusting in his flesh himself. He had self-confidence. Let me tell you something. There are some things that we say here on earth that are very good. They are very interesting for PR and for motivational speaking, but they are not good in the kingdom of God, let me tell you. They are not. They are not. And one such thing is the thing that we've been encouraged all over to believe in ourselves and to have self-confidence. Let me tell you, it is very good. It sounds so good. I would love that myself. But let me tell you, when it comes to the kingdom of God, there is nothing like believing in yourself. <laughs> I have read the Bible. Let me not boast that I've read all of it or how many times, but I've read the Harari. And I have not seen anywhere the Bible tells us to believe in ourselves. No. There is nowhere. You theologians correct me if I'm wrong or I'm wrong. Where the Bible said one time, believe in yourself. Have confidence in yourself or in the flesh. There is nowhere. There is nowhere. And many of us have started exuding these or exhibiting these characteristics of self-confidence, self-reliance, believing in ourselves that we can do it. Yes. Belief and faith should be only directed unto God. Unto God. Not unto ourselves. Not unto the flesh. Because the moment King Saul started believing in himself, he started believing in himself and in his flesh. One time, he is approaching battle and Samuel the prophet gets late and he thinks, I am also capable of offering a sacrifice. You know, this don't care attitude. These people who say, I can do it. No matter what, these people who say, I am qualified and competent. I can take up any sacrifice. I can take up any ceremony. Let me tell you, be very careful. He was the king, yes, but it was not within his mandate to offer sacrifices. He offered that sacrifice. Because Samuel was getting late. And God rejected him. He had self-confidence. Another time he is sent to go and finish the Amalekites. 
He goes. He was told to go and finish completely everything. Then he comes back saying that I've left or spared the fat sheep and rams for offering and Agag the king. And Samuel the, the, the prophet asks, weren't you told or didn't God say that you should completely destroy everything? And he says, yes, yes, I have completed. I have completely destroyed everything. And what is it that I hear bleating? And he said, no, no, these ones are for offering. He had started relying on himself, becoming independent, having confidence in his flesh and in his mind. That's what happened to Saul. And no wonder, now this time when he is in trouble in 1 Samuel, chapter number 28, verse 5, the Bible says, he inquired of the Lord. He didn't inquire of a witch. He inquired of the Lord. But the Lord did not answer him in any form. But let me tell you, there comes a time when you have no confidence in the flesh. When you have no confidence in the mind, when you have no confidence in the world, when you have no confidence with the friends, when you have no confidence in your nation and in your country and in your government and in anyone and in the experts, but there comes a time when you have confidence in your father who art in heaven and you call unto him and he hears you. And I tell you, may God hear your prayer. May God answer your prayer in the name of Jesus. Are you there? You are in distress? As David was saying in Psalms chapter number 118 and verse 5, that I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and he set me in a large place. He called upon the Lord. In the day of distress, he was in distress. And the Lord answered him and set him in a large place. So what God is saying this morning is that there comes a time when you call unto me and I hear you and I answer you. And may I tell you something as he answered David, he told him, you have lost, yes, but because you have decided to inquire from me, you have encouraged yourself in me, I will answer you. Pursue, you shall overtake, and you shall recover all. And may I encourage you that you shall recover all in the name of Jesus. I know we shall carry on next week. With some interesting points. I don't want you to miss next week's sermon. Because the Lord is very faithful. But let me say this as I wind up. Many people have gotten tired of inquiring of the Lord. They are now inquiring of Google. Let me tell you, Google will not help you. There comes a time when Google has no answer. But only God has an answer. There comes a time when doctor has no answer, but only God has an answer. There comes a time when friends have no answers, but God has all the answers. There comes a time when donors have no aid, but only God has your help. That's why David looked and said, I lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Psalms 121. Let me tell you something. There comes a time when you call unto God after all the losses, when you have tried everyone, you have tried friends, 
You have tried business. You have tried investment. You have tried job after job. You have tried creativity. You have tried to come up with all ways of surviving. The government is not providing answers. Experts are not providing answers. Friends are not providing answers. No one is providing answers. But there comes a time when you call on our Father who art in heaven and he hears you and answers you. And may I tell you this morning that as David says that I called upon God in my distress and he answered me and set me in a large place. May God hear your prayer and answer you and set you in a large place in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for every viewer that is watching me. I thank you for every believer. I thank you for everyone, oh dear Lord, that is discouraged in this life. May we find comfort in you, you oh dear Lord. May we find encouragement in your word. May we find encouragement in you, oh dear Lord, alone in the name of Jesus. After being discouraged by everything and everyone, after all the systems are not working, may we find courage in you in the name of Jesus. And every prayer that we have prayed, may you hear us and answer us in the name of Jesus. That cry of distress that we have cried, oh dear Lord, may you hear us. Some people have cried until they have no more power to cry. But I pray in the name of Jesus, may you hear us in the name of Jesus. I pray that Heavenly Father, you will hear this our nation. You will hear the cry of our nation in the name of Jesus. This is our day of distress. And I call upon you, O oh dear Lord, knowing that Lord, when no one else can answer, when no donor can answer, when no expert can answer, when no doctor can answer, when no government can answer, I call upon you. This is our day of distress. Hear us and answer us, oh dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray for my viewer. I pray for their families, those that are in distress. I pray for their businesses. I pray for the works of their hands. I pray for everything that they do in this day of distress. Hear them, O oh dear Lord, and answer them in the name of Jesus. Because you are a faithful God, we thank you and worship you and praise you. We thank you for this service and we thank you for this day. Bless us, O oh dear Lord, and remember us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you very much for joining us. May the Lord continue to bless you. I want to pray for the offerings as we close. And I believe that you are going to be blessed in the name of Jesus. We have been offering through the various platforms um, that have been uh, available to us. The M-Pesa uh, pay bill that is provided at the bottom of your screen. Offer your offering before the Lord in the name of Jesus. You are tight. Don't fail because we are going through distress. The Lord is going to hear your prayer and answer you in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for the offerings and we offer them. And we, continue, we can even continue doing so, even offline, and the Lord is going to bless you. Father, we thank you for every giver and every faithful giver. And everyone has been giving, oh dear Lord. Continue to bless them and bless the works of their hands. And answer their prayer in their day of distress, in the name of Jesus. Remember them throughout the week and watch over them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and also believe. Amen, amen. You can give your offering and may the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful, blessed week. And all the fathers... Happy Father's Day in Jesus' name.